Welcome to the Elk Grove Missionary Baptist Church here in Fort Worth, Texas on Wednesday in the Word. <clears throat> thank you for being with us here on tonight. We thank God for this opportunity to be with you and to worship and fellowship with you in the spirit and in truth. Thank you for grabbing your family and loved ones and <clears throat> joining us on tonight for Wednesday in the Word. I want to encourage you in this season when it seems like there's so much going on, so much to be encouraged in the Lord. Keep trusting God in all that you do. Know that he is yet with you. Great is he that's on the inside of us than he that's in the world. So thank you for being with us here on tonight. Grab your family and loved ones. As we join tonight in the word of the word and prayer <clears throat> and sharing and reading God's word so that we might hear from the Lord in this season. <clears throat> it's really important in this season that you hear from the Lord. That we listen to his voice and pay attention to what he's telling us. Listen, it may, not seem, it may seem like there's a lot going on, but guess what? There is. But guess what? Guess who's in control? God. It's never out of control for him. It's just right for him. Our limitations are God's beginnings. We just have to learn to trust him, even in tough times. Because the word says, great is he that's on the inside of us. That he that's in the world. Who's that he that the, the evil one, the, the Satan, Lucifer? God is greater, has more power than any other creature. He's all powerful. He's omniscient. He's omnipresent. And he's omnipotent. He knows everything. He's everywhere at the same time. And he has all the power. So we, why not call upon a God like that? So thank you. I want to encourage you this season. Listen, before we begin, I want to let you know we're in a season of, of where we're sheltering. Amen. Like they did the Israelites did. When the Lord told the Israelites to go in and shelter in. Take the blood of the Lamb, wipe it over the doorposts. Because why? Pharaoh was not getting God's message. He told Moses, you tell Pharaoh let my people go. Go tell him I am that I am. But guess what? Time after time, through ten plagues, he had to show Pharaoh who he was. And God even allowed Pharaoh's heart to be hardened. That's what the word in scripture that says, the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. And God can even harden our hearts to where we turn away from what's true, what's right. Be careful. Some scriptures call it, he turns us over to a reprobate mind. Satan, I mean, uh, 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 Moses, I mean, uh, uh, Pharaoh hardened his heart so he couldn't see the trap that he was falling into. Because he was so driven. Don't get so driven that you take your focus off God. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, not part of your ways, not some of your ways, not when you think you got it all together, you got all the answers. The word says, in all your ways, acknowledge who? Him. And he shall direct your path. Not mom, not dad, not friends, so-called friends. But God will direct your path. In the season of Pandemic, we're still in it. They want you to shelter in when you wear your facial masks. Listen to the science. I'm going to be here long talking about this. Wash your hands. Get the vaccine, get the vaccine. They talk about if we have to get a booster, we probably want to get the booster as well. We want to make sure we're doing everything we can to make sure we're protecting. And guess what? I wear a mask not to just to protect myself. I wear a mask, facial mask, to protect other people. Season saints around me, children that come around me. I do it to protect them. Why? Because I could be asymptomatic and begin speaking, and then that virus comes out. So that's why here at Elmo Church, we here tonight, we were social distancing. Amen. We're six feet apart. We wear our facial masks coming in. We wash our hands as often as we can. <clears throat> why? Because we want to make sure we're being wise as servants. Harmless as doves. Pastor, why do you say Because that's what the word says. Jesus says, be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. You ever study serpents, you'll understand how wise they are. <laughs> how cunning and sick they are. They're wise creatures. You're cunning, but they're wise. So tonight, as we gather together, I want you to make sure we pray for our country. <clears throat> pray for our military. Tonight, we want to make sure that we lift up and pray for what's going on in Afghanistan and over the water. Amen. We want to pray for our, our friends that are coming in in the southeast uh, portion of the United States from uh, Florida, Georgia, Mississippi, 
Alabama, Louisiana. Pray for our friends that are traveling this way, who've already come this way, who are not refugees, but they're evacuees. I mean, they've evacuated away from their homes. Soon to return, so if you want to pray for them on tonight, I want you to pray for them. You can participate in giving, please share in your giving to them, because it's them today, it could be us tomorrow. You remember back, we were going through a storm back in February. We know how we were without. Some people didn't have, we didn't have water and food for days, weeks, months, a home. Guess what? They're these, our friends, our relatives, <clears throat> our cousins, cousins from, from uh, Louisiana and Mississippi and Alabama will be with us from the southeast portion of Texas. So tonight we want to invite you to be with us and invite you to grab your family. We go right to the Word. Our scripture reading, you know, we've been walking through uh, Matthew chapter 5. We haven't made it through the past of it. No, we haven't. We've missed a few Sundays where I had to be away and so on. Uh, but yet, so we're going to be, we're going to walk right through this because this is the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is the Sermon of Jesus Priest on the side of the mountain, sharing the word, principles, and we've always talked about living by principles. So it does no good to live your life anyway. We should live our life guided by not, not the Texas Penal Code, not the Texas Civil Practice and Remedies Code, not, not the civil law, not the probate law, but by what the principles are, kingdom principles. Why? Because we're kingdom citizens. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. We still have to abide by rules, and we, and we pray for our rules, our, our, our president, our, our, our mayors, and our <clears throat> council people, our county judges, state reps, congressmen. Governors, president, vice president, all of them. We pray for all of them. But we're still pilgrims passing through. We didn't come here to stay. We didn't come here to stay. We're just passing through on our way home. And I don't I want to go home. I want to go home to be with the Lord. And one day we will. Guess what? You will be here. Everybody has got to come this way and lay in front of this. Might not be this church, maybe another church. Maybe, maybe it's a funeral park. You know, home, where they have to serve, hey, whatever it is. Maybe it's a great site service. Guess what? They will have to put you in a can up in this way. They got to put you in a casket, a box, and put you down six feet in the ground, unless you're cremated. Everybody's got to pass this way. Nobody escapes this thing alive. But it's good when you have somewhere to go. You don't worry about it. Hallelujah. When you got somewhere to go, you got your ticket in your hand, you don't worry about it. where you're going. You know where you're going. Isn't that good news to know? That I go to be with the Lord. Well, I reign with him. No more sickness, no more pain. No, in the land of no more. No more pills, no more, no, no more caves, no more eyeglasses. Hallelujah. No more dialysis. No, 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 no more heart pills, huh? No more back surgeries. No more foot surgeries. No more bunion issues. Huh? Don't have to worry about it ever again. Just be with the Lord and reign with him forever. Don't you want to go? Mm, raise your hand if you want to go. I know I want to go. That's right. That's right. We, we want to go. So we, tonight we invite you to be with us as we go right to the Word. Be encouraged in this season. The Word says, in 2 Timothy says, these are perilous times, and we knew these times were coming. It's not that catch God off by surprise. All these times that have to happen. I call it God heating up the earth, getting it just crisp and right so when it comes back, we can strike up next to it and burn it up. <laughs> First time by water, second time by what? Fall. Oh, he's gonna burn it up, I promise you. Amen. These buildings, these edifices, these temples, amen. Them great big churches you see with 25,000 feet, he's gonna burn them to the ground. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why? Because we he got a better home for us. We're caught up in this stuff. This stuff will pass away. Things that are seen are temporal. Things that are not seen are everlasting. We want that everlasting blessing, that salvation, that redemption, that love, that joy, everlasting blessings. Not this earthly stuff that will, will rust and the worms get in. The word tells us, don't lay up your treasures on earth where the thieves come in and steal and break in and steal and take it. The rust and moths eat up. He says, don't lay up yourself. Lay up your treasure in heaven. Hallelujah. So we invite you to do that. Let's go right to the Word on tonight. We'll go right to reading a few scriptures, our consecration scriptures. We haven't read Matthew in a while. I want to remind you of it. Listen, you ever get, want to be encouraged, we'll just read the Word. You ever can't sleep at night? Just begin reading God's Word. And it will give you rest and peace for the night. 
So Matthew chapter 5, uh, King James Version, says, you stand if you like it. I want you to stand for God and honor God's word. Uh, even in your home, you can stand in God and you can always honor God's word. Matthew chapter 5 says, verse 1, <clears throat> And seeing the multitudes, he went up into the mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and opened his mouth, and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they, theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I might know I want to. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. We'll stop right there at verse 9. Our constitution verse tonight is finishing up with Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. So I ask you a question tonight. Are you a peacemaker or are you a hellraiser? <laughs> are you a peacemaker or are you a hellraiser? Amen. As we get ready to, to prepare for our prayer, our time of prayer, we want to go to God in prayer. And I remember I often share time with my great grandmother used to go down to the church and, uh, on Wednesday night. She and other deaconess and they would pray. And know what I mean? So they were just down there praying. They were down there one hour and they would pray every Wednesday. I remember my father had to take her down that she was legally blind. Go out to him, drive around. But every Wednesday night, he said, All right, come on. Let's go. I got to go to the church. Amen. They'd get in the car and she, he would walk her down the aisle. Get the leader would come on and he would <clears throat> go ahead and put on the first row. She would be there with the other deaconess and they would pray. There'd be the other trustees and men there. They would pray as well. So tonight I want to do some special prayer. And uh, first of all, for Brother Grigsby, and we give God a praise, God, and God, give God a praise report. Thank you for the life of Brother Grigsby, what he's been doing his life. I want to pray for <clears throat> Sister Hyman, Sister Charlotte Hyman. I want to pray for a co of mine, Sister Brenda Murphy, on tonight. I pray for her relative, Daryl Murphy, understand. Had a challenge incident, health incident on today. We want to pray to God we be with him on today. I want to pray for the Simmons family. Sister Caroline Simmons, amen. Caroline Simmons, amen. And um, I want to pray for the Steele family in this season of transition with Mother Mother, uh, Mother Carolina Marie Beals in transition from life to eternity. I want to pray for them in this season. I want to pray for um, also Sister uh, C. Sister C. had asked in Texas to pray for her family, her grandparents, uh, uh, Sister Victoria Daniel. Brother Lee Dan, we want to pray for them on tonight and that God will yet meet them at their need. Pray for also, too, for Brother Jerome Deeds on tonight. As God is yet healing you. Brother Jerome, you'll be encouraged. God is going to heal you and continue to heal you. To believe by faith. He said, Would thou be made whole? Have faith and never doubt. He will bring you up. Pray for Lee Coles under the weather. Sister Lori Hodge. Uh, and uh, we'll pray for the Dixon and Middleton family in this season that God will comfort them and encourage their hearts. I want to pray for caregivers on today. You know, a lot of times caregivers get worn down. You never get by the caregivers that take care of people. They get worn down taking care of folks. I want to pray for them. I want to pray for the doctors and nurses that take care of us when we get under the weather. Emergency rooms are dealing with us even while we're going through this pandemic. And have to see patient after patient. I was reading an article today about hospitals being overwhelmed and the surge happening in People being overwhelmed and because they're going right back in 18 months, they've been fighting this battle. And a little low, but now we're fighting again. But I want to pray for doctors and nurses. I want to pray for Dean Healy, Mother Mother Watkins, Sister Smiley Watkins, and also Sister Mother, Mother, Mother Cash. So as we pray, we want to go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you, God, for right now. Thank you for this time of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer. Time to get weary with steal away, God. In speak to you and talk to you and tell you what's on our heart. Tell you all about our troubles. <clears throat> and then God hear you and listen to you as you speak to us. So God, we come to you, oh God, because you said we could. Forgive us of our sins. Sins of omission and comfort we've done against you, God. Have mercy upon us on tonight. We pray, oh God, for all the names, oh God, that we've listed out tonight. Special prayer for Brother Grigsby, God, for your healing. Sister Hyman. 
Brother Brenda, Brother, Brother, Brother Daryl Murphy, Sister Brenda Murphy. God, we lift them up to you in the name of Jesus. We, Sister Ask us to just cast the names of the names of Sister Brenda Murphy, Brother Daryl Murphy, God, on tonight. God, we know you can get moving in a mighty way. In that. So when Satan make the man, God, turn it around for Brother Daryl's good, Lord. Be peace for the family in this season. Strengthen them. Let them know they're not alone. We pray for your healing, oh God, for, for brother, sister, for brother, brother Lee Daniel, and sister Victoria Daniel, and brother Jerome Deeds, and little Nico, God, who's yet under the weather, and sister Hawkins. God be with the Dixon family, and Milton family this season, and also the Simmons family, oh God, and the Steele family. We pray, oh God, for doctors and nurses and caregivers and MLS drivers who have to take time, oh God, to take care of us when we're under the weather. We pray we continue to heal them, Mother Watkins. Sister Lana Watkins, God, in, in the name of Jesus, we plead your blood, God, over her, God, in the name of Jesus. We pray for Mother Cash, God, you continue to heal her body. God, we pray for our children today, God, that they will make right choices. Help them to make right choices in all situations. Those who are going back to school, God, we pray your protection over public school, private schools, from pre K, God, all the way through high school. Middle black trade schools and colleges and universities and junior colleges, God, all over this land. God, be with our children. Help us to train them up the way they should go, God, so when they own, they won't depart. We pray, oh God, for our military. Our military is in Afghanistan, oh God, even right now. Those who are yet trying to transition back, families, Americans are yet there. God, protect them. Cover them in your blood. Meet them at their need. Let them know they're not forgotten about them. God, they got to make a way out. God, you said in your word, you never, and God, you always allow us a way of escape. So, God, we speak, God, a way of escape for those who are yet, it seems like they're trapped in situations, even in America, God. Situations, relationships, or addictions, or God, drugs, alcohol, whatever, people, money, things, stuff. Help us to get over our addictions <clears throat> so we can trust you. We pray for the government of the United States of America. All governments, God. You said to pray for those in authority over us. So we pray for them that they would have godly wisdom. Make right choices in all situations. Think about the effect on people. God, turn the king's heart when you feel the need. Let the king know, oh God, you are yet still God in control. And though they may be president, mayor, governor, Congressman, Congresswoman, city council person, county judge, commissioner. God, you are yet God and you reign. So God, we trust you. God, meet every need, oh God, that we pray for tonight. Anything I forgot to bring, oh God, we ask God you meet the, meet the need even right now. We know you can yet do it. So grant peace, oh God, that surpasses all understanding. Wipe away tears today, God, for those who yet mourning the loss of loved ones. Now that we know you are yet with them. Strengthen God. So we speak peace to them. Shalom, shalom. In the name of Jesus the Christ. We pray and ask it all. Amen. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men. The man, Christ Jesus. Who gave himself as a ransom for us. On tonight as we pick up where we left off. And we always have to go back through a brief review. And talk about how we got to where we are. And that. And this sermon here found in, in, in Matthew chapter 5 is the longest sermon that Jesus ever preached. Jesus was walking and just, be, but yet just left in chapter 4, healing, healing the sick and walking around. And the people were throngs of people were yet following him. And Jesus stopped and walked up on the side of the hill. And he sat the people down. The throngs of people were just coming and following him where, where he was going. They wanted to know what Jesus would do next. You know, a lot, a lot of people like to look, look, see. <laughs> look, they, they're on the road highway, they call them looky loos. <laughs> you know, people like to look at them. You see people driving, and people look at the lane over there, and they look at all they're trying to see. Looky loos. That one looks some looky loos. But that's okay. Looky loos can get saved too. Oh my God, I preached that one day. Looky loos can get saved too. Jesus began teaching these principles, trying to teach the people how they should live on earth. In this sermon, he wasn't just talking, he wasn't just talking to non believers, he was talking to the believers. How are we to live our life? How are we to be governed by God's word? We ought to be. Why? Because we rely on kingdom principles because we're kingdom citizens. Can you say that? Kingdom principles because we're kingdom citizens. 
He was teaching them how to live, how to work, and how to operate in this world. He knew he, knew he only had such a certain period of time. But Jesus wanted to teach. He didn't hoop, scoop, or holler. Nowhere in the world did he hear me. Jesus he, 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 he taught the people. Why? That's what we ought to be about doing this past. We ought to be better teachers of God's word. Watch it. So, yeah, I, 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 Mama's used to always say, when you know better, you do better. If we teach people the word, wow, so when pastors aren't always around, when the Bible's not always there, when we hide the word in our heart, we live better. Make better choices. I believe if we, if we really knew the word and understood the word, we would make better choices. We would understand the importance of making better choices. Jesus set the people down, the crowd, the people down, and they followed him, and he set them down on the side of the hill, and he began to teach them and, and to talk with them about, about the word. And a lot of people think they even this whole word about Beatitudes and, and, and living by this word is difficult. But you know, let me tell you, you can do it. We can do it. We have to practice if we want to make it perfect. You know, they used to tell us all the time playing sports, practice makes perfect. If you never start practicing, you won't, make, you won't get perfect yet. Old Deacon told me once that you never get nothing done unless you get started. So we ought to be getting started about working and living by these principles. The religious leaders were re relying on outward conduct to try to regulate their how they live, how they live. But Jesus was trying to tell them the change happens what flows from the inside out. Your conduct flows what out of your character. How you how what governs you? How what helps you to make right choices when nobody's looking? What keeps you from Doing this, doing that, from telling stories, from lying, not, not speaking the truth, from, from cheating and stealing, amen, and not living like a Christian should. It's your conduct. But your conduct controls your outward appearance. It makes you do. Jesus was trying to teach them. Let me teach you the principles that will help you get, be different on the inside. So Jesus was saying, let me work on the inside so we can get it on the outside. Oh, my God. So he's working from the inside out, not the outside in. That's why God, God told when God told Saul, listen, you don't, don't, don't pick them on how they look. You pick the last king, Saul. Let me pick them. I look at the inside. Man looks at the outside. You know, that's how we always think preachers are, uh, uh, are good people. Oh, you're a good preacher. Uh, 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 okay, well, really? Okay. I'd rather be judged by the audience of one, which is God. What does God think about me and my life and how I live? That's how I look at it. But Jesus was saying, stop worrying on the looking on the outside. Don't be like the Pharisees. Be so do it for shows so or people. Think, what are you doing to change your inside? That nasty attitude on the inside of you. That's what he said. Sit down, let me talk to you. He said, let's sit down, let me, let me share with you this, 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 this certain thing called the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus taught we ought, we ought to be living what? Righteously. Not self-righteous, but righteous living. That means we live before God in a way that's Please, pleasing unto God. Not live self-righteous, but live a life upright before God. Not looking down on nobody, but treating and living people and treating our brothers and sisters right. Jesus, they thought of Jesus, uh, when he began to teach this, that it was strange. He began by teaching this and showing it. He said, first he said it was blessed. Huh? The inner satisfaction and sufficiency of not being dependent on our circumstances, but being blessed on the inside. He said, you want to be blessed? Start from the inside out. And we know the scripture says, I will keep you, your mind in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. So, so these begin with verse, verse number three in this chapter five. He, and I'm going to go through them because we talked about them some. But he says that in verse number three, uh, he says, blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of God. And notice in all of these, Jesus says who they are, but then he says what they get. Ooh, oh my God, y'all, y'all miss your friends, you miss your He said, he said, in all these verses, we get ready to cover one through nine, uh, three through nine. He said, I'm going to tell you who they are, but I'm going to tell you what they get because of who they are. Mm. Oh my Lord. He says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Watch, look at the, look at the, look at the, look at the paradigm there. Blessed are the poor in spirit, listen to the words, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Now, that doesn't mean be poor spirit. It doesn't mean you think of yourself less. It means you, you have, a, have an attitude of humility about yourself. How you look at other people, how you relate to other folks. Because we know Luke 14, 11 says, Who, For whosoever exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. And Jesus was teaching, be a humble creature. Are you a humble creature? Are you a peacemaker or are you a hell raiser? People are not humble or uh, uh, hell raisers, aren't they? 
Jesus was telling him, we get to verse number nine here in a minute. He said, be, be, be a peacemaker. Be a peacemaker. Verse number four. He says, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. In this life, you will have trouble. Sometimes we'll have to mourn. Loved ones that leave us, situations of challenges that, that, that are not so good. But he said, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be. Look at the benefit. People who mourn, they go be comforted. Poor in spirit, they get the kingdom of heaven. Oh my God. Look at that. We get comforted even when we get more. So if you're going through something, I want to let you know, you will be comforted. Jesus Christ will comfort you. He's the great comforter. Verse number five says, Blessed are the meek. Look what they get. For they shall inherit the earth. The meek inherit the earth. Poor in spirit, they come. Right? <laughs> Look at the blessings that people get. Huh? Are you a peacemaker or your hell raiser? As we push on. Jesus began to teach them and show them that the, the beatitude is, is, is very much of the promises that God promises through his word. And, and the characteristics, when you think about the meek, when you think about meek people in, in verse number five, is that meekness is an attribute of human nature and behavior that has been defined as being an inner humility and patience. Oh my Lord, we stop right there. How many, are you being patient? You have a spirit of humbleness and being patient? Meekness is a, is meekness, if we can ask the question, is meekness past a bad quality? No, it's not. Meek is a word that most likely believe, it, uh, most people believe it's a bad thing to be meek. They think it means weak. No, it doesn't. Meek doesn't mean weak. It means being powerful without taking action. I like to say it this way. I call it power under control. That's what meekness is. Power under control. In the Bible, meek me are those who have a spirit of gentleness and self-control that are free from malice and, and, and a condescending spirit. Self-control. Are you a person with self-control? If you're not, you're probably not. If, you, if you're a person that's out of control, you see people out of control. Some people get to a talk, talk with people, have a talk with people, and they just fly off the handle. Mama said, they just fly off the handle. Just start raising their voice, right? And they just take something from what? Zero to a thousand in one second. Out of control. This word says, the meek shall inherit the earth. Jesus says, when we meet, you will inherit the earth. Verse number six says, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Notice it didn't say, blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after man, hunger and thirst after who, hunger and thirst after wife or husband. Amen. We should be hungry and thirsty after that. The word tells us, uh, 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 bless us, when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing. It didn't say the wife finds a man. Okay, that's a whole other sermon. Okay. We're just teaching tonight. Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. It means when you search the word so much, you hunger and thirst for the word so much, you search it, you have to read it. It feeds you, it, it fills you, it calms you down, it lets you know, gives you. But you ever read the word and when you were upset and it calms you? That's the word filling you. Because you hunger for truth and for righteousness. It said, Blessed are they that through hunger and thirst of the righteousness, for they shall be filled with, filled with the Holy Spirit. Fill more with, with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Fill more with God, who Jesus is. It changes you. Don't hunger and thirst after stuff after a car, a Cadillac, or a new house, or a new man, new this. No. Hunger and thirst after righteousness. For they shall be filled. Jesus set them down and began sharing with them that. The importance of seeking God. I, I call it like this. The scripture tells us, seek God first. Be a God seeker. You know what the word says? It's a promise. The scripture that says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added. That's a promise. We shared with you last week. That's a promise from God. If you make me number one, Hunger and thirst after righteousness, after my truth, not your truth. Everything you need will be provided. 
He said the birds don't need nothing. The birds don't, the lilies of the field, they, they don't have a word. Birds are there, they wake up every morning, we wouldn't go eat. It's God provides it. That's the same promise. Seek. Verse 7 says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Mercy identifies the needs of others. It's in reverse of selfishness and self-centeredness. In the English translation in the Bible, it comes to the expression of phrase such as be to be merciful. The corresponding term merciful describes the quality of God and one that God requires of all his people. To be merciful, to show mercy. That means you don't give justice, you give mercy. I mean, you don't, you give people what they don't deserve. Well, you don't know how they treat you, Pastor. Mercy says that you get what you don't deserve. Justice says you get what you deserve. You know, we mean our not day and age our now legal says we believe in justice going forth and justice being served. Jesus taught mercy. And in fact, that's what we got. You, didn't, you, remember, you, you remember when Jesus was dying on the cross? What did we get? Mercy. Why? Because you want to go past Well, how did we get mercy? Well, because that was our sin that he was nailed to the cross. That was our wrong. That was our evil. That was us killing him. Our sin, when they were nailing Jesus to the cross, that was our sin. Not his. The word says Jesus was the only man to walk the earth who would never sin. The word says he that knew no sin became sin for us. That's mercy. When it should have been me on that cross, when he took my place, he switched with me. That's mercy. You mean I don't have to die on the road where he crossed? No. It's fixed for all time. Jesus whooped and defeated death, hell, and the grave for us. No longer will rams and bulls have to die once a year. Why? Because of what? His grace and mercy brought me through. I'm living. Why? Because of him. Because he would have brought us through. How do we show mercy? We show mercy by being patient with people. And those that are around and those who are hurting. By, by giving people a second chance. By doing good to those who hurt us. That's how we show mercy. Building bridges of love and uh, uh, unpopular. Uh, value relationships over rules. That's how we show mercy. And next, verse number eight says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. So watch this, watch this. The poor spirit get the kingdom of heaven. The mourners get comforted. The meek, they, they get they, they inherit the earth. Huh? You hunger and thirst of the righteousness, you be filled. The merciful, they obtain mercy. Watch, look, at, look at what we get. Look at the paradise. The pure in heart, what? They, what? Shall see God. Pure heart means that you have a heart of thinking of God. Uh, uh, those who are inwardly pure show themselves to be under the power of pure and undefiled religion. A Christian's heart is, is a heart of purity, of being washed from wickedness. Psalm 24 and 4 says, He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. What, what does it mean by pure heart? It is, it is an adjective which means without malice. Without malice that you have, no treachery, no evil intent. You're honest, you're sincere. No guileless. That's what the pure, they got the pure heart. What, they get a chance to, how many of you want to see God? I know I do. I want to see God. Huh? The pure heart, they always smile, aren't they? They're giving, they're expecting, they're treating everyone with respect. They're making others happy. They're always ready to help other people. I always forgive you. That's what the pure in heart does. And if I, if we, if we go to our concentration verse on tonight, I ask you the question, are you a peacemaker or are you a hell raiser? Peacemakers are ones who make peace, especially by reconciling different parties uh, uh, who have varying issues or different uh, outcomes. Romans 12 and 10 tells us that if possible, uh, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. 
Peacemakers use this this relationship to make uh, make a, make a, uh, to relationship like a containing vessel for the learning process. Peacemaker must regulate the level of stress between parties. They like to see peace to be brought between the individuals who are different. What's the difference between a peacemaker and, and a peacekeeper? I'm glad you asked. A peacemaker is someone who's willing to resolve both outer and inner turmoil in order to establish peace with others and within themselves. Watch this. But a peacekeeper, on the other hand, desires to maintain peace by avoiding conflict. Look at the difference. By avoiding conflict, they typically give in to the tensions or steer clear of disagreement, but not the peacemaker. The peacemaker is willing to resolve both the outer and inner turmoil. That's the difference between a peacemaker and a peacekeeper. Those who pursue this kind of Peace are all doing to promote the welfare of others. Uh, this, this, this beatitude, the seventh beatitude, takes every Christian worker into the task in, in conflict resolution. We as Christian believers ought to be about resolving conflicts. Ought to be about trying to resolve conflicts between parties, between people, between families. Ought to be about trying to solve problems. Conflicts arise whenever people have differences of opinion. Jesus made it, made, made, it, made us helped us when we began to look at we talk, start talking about conflict resolution and, and resolve. He even told us even how to do it. As we go to Matthew number eight, verse number chapter number eighteen. We go to Matthew chapter number eighteen. But again, let's go down to verse number um, we go down to verse number uh, uh, verse number fifteen. It, it, Jesus tells us in Matthew as, as being a peacemaker, how he was all conflict in Matthew chapter 18. Look at verse number 15. It says, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. And if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Wow. So, so if you resolve that, guess what? That solved that conflict up for you and your brother. But look at verse 16. It says, But if he will not hear you thee, then take with thee one or two more. And in the, in the mouth and in, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. So if, the, if it didn't work by you going to your brother first and all that, is this word says Jesus says take go go and take another brother two or two with you, Amen. To go and resolve the issue. But then it says if he shall neglect to hear thee after he brought back the brother one or two brothers, it, it says tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church. Let, let him be unto thee as a heathen man and a public. As a heathen and a public. I want to look at the New Living Translation version that when it talks about uh, that particular verse. I, want, I don't really want you to get what it, Jesus is actually saying here. Uh, it, 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 it's in the section where you talk about co correcting the believer. Verse number 17, it says, it, it says, if the person still refuses to listen, it says, take your case to the church. Then if he or she won't accept the church's decision, treat the person as a, as a pagan or a corrupt tax collector. Wow. This is how Jesus said we ought to be about resolving conflicts as peacemakers in our community. How we ought to be resolving issues. The God is the God of peace. In 1 Thessalonians 5.16, that we show ourselves to be children when we seek to make peace in the workplace, in the community, in our homes, and in the whole world. First Thessalonians five sixteen says, uh, "Always be joyful." Proverbs twelve and twenty tells us more about being. It says, "The seat is in the heart of those who devise evil, but counselors of peace they have joy." Wow, counselors of peace it means being a peacemaker, still a hellraiser. Amen. And we know whatever hellraiser people always just like having. And you know, people always got to have something going. Always got to have. Issues and conflict happening just for the sake of it. Some people, some people like it. Some people like having mess. They call it, uh, uh, they call it mess. Some people like having mess going. Always something. Always this and that. She said, she did. they said, you said, brother. Always. Why can't we live at peace? Be at peace with one another. Shalom. Why can't we be, be at peace and we're in a peace with one another? Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. I mean, 
many of you want to be a peacemaker, not a hell raiser? Because this says what you get to be by not being a, by being a peacemaker is you get to be called a child of God. Wow, what a blessing! That means when he see when you die, you stand before him. He recognizes you as one of his children. He says, "Come on in. You've been faithful in a few things." He says, "Well done, good and perfect servant." Huh? Well, well done, good and faithful servant. Not perfect, faithful servant. Let me say perfect. Well done, good and faithful. You've been faithful. You weren't always perfect. You didn't always make the right choices. But you tried to live what? As a peacemaker. Come on in. I want to hear him say, well done. I want to hear Jesus say, well done. Peacemakers are, are people who are, who are friendly, agreeable. They cooperate. They're adaptable. They focus on other people rather than themselves. Peacemakers like to resolve conflict. Separation, chaos. Hellraisers do just like, you know, hellraisers, hell, hellraisers uh, they, they like to see conflict. They like to see separation. They like to see chaos happening. Romans 14 and 19 says, So then we pursue the things which make for peace and the building up of one another. We are all, and being a peacemaker means you build up one another. You don't tear one another down. You attempt to build one another up in the holy, most holy faith. Amen? Luke 6 and 31 says, And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. I mean, as a peacemaker, if you wish for people to treat you right, guess what you have to do? I mean, you have to treat people right. You want others to go to Ruth as you would have them what? Do unto you. Jesus was telling them, live by this principle of being a, a, a peacemaker. So you may be what called, what called a child of the king, a child of God. Peace in the Bible is, is never being confused, confused with pacifism. Uh, being peaceful means you avoid strife, you avoid the conflict issues, you, you try to appease the parties. Colossians 3 and 15 says, And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Peacemakers or people who try to accommodate and, and, and resolve issues to make sure that the, that the conflict that was there is resolved. That's what Jesus Christ was. Jesus said, I didn't come to take over. When Jesus Christ came to the earth, as we get very close tonight, he said, I didn't come to take over, I didn't come to be here. They wanted him to, you come on, rise up, be this conquering king. We don't want to come in. Come in, tear our enemies down. He said, I didn't come for that. I came to reign, but I came to reign in your hearts. Jesus was telling them in the Sermon on the Mount, I come to be King in your heart, not king in this world. Jesus came in riding in Jerusalem on a little donkey. He didn't come in on a giant stag corner horse like most leaders do. Why? Jesus knew it was not about him. It was about his father. He knew it wasn't his time. He was trying to fulfill what his father's. Need. And I think Jesus' whole life was living before us in the words of the Sermon on the Mount. He was teaching them how to, how to be poor in spirit. And yes, Jesus didn't mourn what he went through. How to be meek. How to hunger and thirst for what? Righteousness in God. How to be merciful. How would people, see when people would spend on him and treat him bad, Jesus didn't turn around and treat them bad, did he? When they pierced him in the side with the, soul, with, with the spear. When they put a thorn on the crown, he didn't go out again. Jesus could have called legions of angels. But he didn't. Jesus said, I'm going to let you put me on this old rugged cross. We close. I'm going to show them mercy. And then we got up on the cross. As he was dying, what did he say? Father, that's mercy. <laughs> so he went from being the persecuted to actually stepping in the gap between us and, and, and judgment. By saying, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know who you and I are. They don't know our relationship. They don't know I came for this. Jesus became the peacemaker. That's what the word says. He's the prince of peace. He didn't come to start wars. Could have called angels. He could have come down to some sin and saved himself. But he decided to die. 
and he gave his life. He switched places with us, didn't he? And then he told his father, Father, into your hands, the reason I came, I commend my spirit. And he died. Jesus became the ultimate peacemaker, not a hellraiser. They wanted to be the hellraiser, didn't they? <laughs> they would come, come on, come on, Jesus, do, do how he ended his dad. You don't know what he was doing, huh? My mother told me I used to do this. He said, I didn't come for that. I come to be a peacemaker. I come to reign in the hearts of men. He didn't have to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. This is time we pray for you as we close tonight. Won't you be a peacemaker? A person who tries to resolve conflict and issues in family and community, your home. Don't be a hell raiser. Be a peacemaker. Like Christ. What an example. Instead of thinking about himself, he thought of us. That's why he gave himself for us. Keep the faith. All right, see you Sunday morning live, next Wednesday, Wednesday the Word. We're going to keep getting the Word out, amen, abandon it or not. The Word will be gotten out, join us next week. Keep the faith. Be a peacemaker and not a hellraiser. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you today for my brothers and sisters listening. Bless them on the day, God, to be peacemakers. Help us all to live better according to your word, to the example of Jesus the Christ. We pray and again, lift up the banners, we lift up to the name we call out about. We believe, God, in the name of Jesus. According to God, we accord to the faith of my brothers and my sisters. In the mighty name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Keep the faith. See you next week.